quarantine may have pushed back album release dates. It may have canceled tour. But it is good for one thing, and that is to give musicians time to work on new music. Today is Wednesday, it's May 20th, and this is The Current Music News. Hi, I'm Jade. And I'm Jay. News today is that Kathleen Edwards has announced her first new album in eight years. She's returning to music after a six year hiatus during which she opened a coffee shop. Her new album is gonna be called Total Freedom, dropping in August. You might not recognize her name and that's okay, it's been a minute. Here's kind of a quick Kathleen Edwards 101. She's a really important artist who's been quietly influential. If you go back and listen to her early albums like 2003's Failure and Back to Me from 2005, you'll really hear how she was ahead of the curve on this sound. It's clean, but it's rootsy. It's the songwriter-driven Americana rock sound that now is all over like the Grammy stages with artists like Casey Musgraves, Jason Isbell, Brandi Carlisle. Kathleen Edwards was really kind of in on the ground floor with that sound and influenced a lot of those artists. She ended up stepping away from music in 2014 because it seemed to her, she tells Rolling Stone now, like it was hard for people to focus on her music. Her last album came out in 2012. It was called Voyager and she co-produced it with Justin Vernon of Bon Iver. The two also had a short personal romantic relationship and she says it seems like that's all anyone wanted to talk about it's all they wanted to focus on as opposed to talking about you know the music that she wrote and made uh, so for that another reason she stepped away for several years she's now coming back she acknowledges it's a hard time to make a musical comeback it's a hard time to do anything because pandemic but she says she's really proud of her new music and the perseverance behind it In more new music news, Lord is back with some new music. And this news comes with some pluses and minuses. So, bad news first, uh, the album is not going to come out anytime soon. In fact, the album is not finished. But the good news, uh, she's back together with her musical partner in crime, Jack Antonoff. And if you know anything about those two getting into a room together, musical magic. So, uh... The the band will get back together as soon as they can kind of figure out how to do this whole thing remotely, because that's how we do things now. Uh, so apparently, Lord and Antonoff got together back in December, started working on the new follow-up to the 2017 melodrama. Um, well, now everything's put on hold. And so Lord said it's going to take a little bit longer, but she is truly jazzed uh, for fans to hear the new music. And she said as well that uh, I can tell you this new thing, it's got its own colors now. If you know anything about my work, you know what that means. I don't know what that means. Me either, Jay. But I think it means that it's, it's full, it's living its life in colors as opposed to black and white. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, if you're if you're a true Lord fan, you can just let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Please, thank you. Our next story involves a sort of existential question that's really important to you if you are Roger Waters. And the question is, who is Pink Floyd? Okay, it's not an is, it's an are, but who are Pink Floyd? Here's why it's important to Roger Waters. So he was one of the band's co-founders back in 1965, and he basically led Pink Floyd through their biggest, most popular period, that incredible string of albums through the 70s into the early 80s. He left the band in 1985, and this is all in the news now because he has hopped on his YouTube channel saying he's a little bit upset that David Gilmour, who has led Pink Floyd since Roger Waters' departure, now thinks he gets to be... Pink Floyd and decide everything Pink Floyd and just have Pink Floyd all to himself. Specifically, Roger Waters would like to be able to use Pink Floyd's website and social media to share news about what he's doing, his solo work, his tours, and, you know, things like he recently did a socially distanced version of the song Mother that he wrote for Pink Floyd back in the wall days. So, you know, it's understandable that he's frustrated. What do you think, Jade? Is it weird that Roger Waters can't, like, post to Pink Floyd's Facebook page? 
it's it's kind of like the Beach Boys thing. Like, who actually gets to use the name? When do you get to use it if you're doing a solo tour? It gets really sticky. I mean, I'm really optimistic and generous, so I say, hey, the more the merrier. Let's all be Pink Floyd. But I'm guessing there's some legal issues there that are a little bit more touchy. And maybe some money involved. Who's getting paid for what? Yeah, well, we'll see how this plays out. Another person who's been very introspective and thoughtful, that would be Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. Uh, he's been quite reflective lately, and haven't we all? But he, his latest thoughts have been about this two-year anniversary where, two years ago, Nine Inch Nails asked their fans to go buy tickets in person, have that human contact when you buy your tickets to the show, instead of, you know, going online. But now... Everything's online. And Trent Reznor took to Nine Inch Nails' website to share an all caps update. Uh, he said their latest tour is canceled, but they're actually going to be selling merch uh, and they're going to be selling it online, obviously. But the proceeds are going to go to food banks in the cities that they were set to tour, which is really sweet. And he said he's been working on uh, film score projects again and he's taking a deep dive into new Nine Inch Nails material. And working on my limited patience skills, which again, haven't we all? Uh, and he said uh, he had a little bit of advice for his fans and listeners. And he said, listen to the upcoming album from Nine Inch Nails, would be tour mate. That's uh, Jenny Beth of Savages. And he said, continue listening to Bowie and don't be so hard on yourself, which is really great advice. And the whole thing is in all caps, which makes it sound like he's just like yelling the whole thing. <laughs> Listen to David Listen Bowie! To Bowie. <laughs> okay, 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 Trent. Done, done. Mm -hmm. Well, that's today's music news. We will be back with another update, so like and follow us. You can be sure to catch it. And in the meantime, listen to The Current on your radio, on your smart speaker, on our app, and on our web stream. And click on the comments to let us know what music news stories are meaningful to you right now. This may seem like a particularly odd time to be getting into the personal fragrance business, given that everybody has to stay six feet apart right now, right? Well, it seems like Low Cut Connie have decided that if they're ever going to catch up with Britney Spears' 30 different fragrances, you have to start sometime, right? Well, here is frontman Adam Wiener talking about the band's new custom scent, Private Lives. Boys and girls, this is Private Lives. Can you smell that? Woo! The new fragrance, unisex, a little bit spicy, clean, all organic scent. I put it on in the morning when I'm not feeling so great and it just gives me that little bit of uplift. Mm. 